Hey there! It's uh, been a while I suppose, my initial plan for this channel was to do weekly uploads but it kind of didn't work out that way for a whole variety of reasons, but I figured something I worked on just for fun recently would make for, well, a good video. Also I've started work on a game project recently, I'll probably post a first devlog on that soon as well, but yeah, I don't quite know about that yet. Anyways, recently I've seen a lot of YouTubers in general experiment with ChatGPT, and for those of you living under a rock, ChatGPT is a chatbot style AI that knows about all kinds of stuff and is a decently, and also surprisingly, a competent AI. So yeah, one of the videos that really piqued my interest in it was a video by Life Overflow who tried creating a Minecraft mod, or well, a hack with it, which worked surprisingly well, mostly at least. However, he already knew how Minecraft modding works, and well, so do I. Instead, I figured I'll try something more extreme and more realistic, if you will. I decided that I want to try to create a Slave Aspire mod. And yeah, while I have considered modding Slave Aspire in the past, I've never actually done it. So, you know, in other words, I'll try to create a mod for a game I have never modded before in my life, using essentially only ChatGPT and a prayer or something. I am, however, very experienced with programming and modding in general, and I can also tell you right now that without prior knowledge, ChatGPT on its own will, as a matter of fact, not suffice to create a mod. You still need to at least vaguely know what you're doing, which, you know, no huge surprise there, I guess. So is using ChatGPT to create a mod a good approach? Does that work? Should you do this too? Well, I mean, yes, but also no. What does that mean? Well, we'll get to that shortly. First of all, I would like to use this opportunity though to ask you to please leave me a subscription on this channel if you enjoy my content. No pressure though, you obviously don't need to do that, but it would certainly help me out a lot and show me that people like the content I'm uploading here and are actually interested in it. Alright, so how have I actually approached this? Well, let's just say this wasn't the first idea I had in mind, I also asked ChatGPT for some other quite wacky things to test its limits so to speak. And yeah, don't worry, we'll get to modding soon. I just figured I'll also include this, as some of his is indeed quite funny, and if you don't want to see it, feel free to skip ahead. One of my first tests was to ask ChatGPT to provide me with code for an essentially random program I came up with, and I wanted it to provide me with the first 100 decimal places of pi, followed by counting the amount of a number 3 in that set. Yeah, I know, that sounds super arbitrary, but there's a good reason for that. My idea behind this was to ask it for some random code task to figure out how able it is to actually come up with new code, not just essentially reciting already existing code. And the code it came up with was indeed very satisfactory. There are some magic numbers in the code it came up with and I haven't actually tested whether this really outputs the correct answers, but generally speaking I'd say it gave good enough documentation to manually fix any and all mistakes it made easily anyways. It also used a, well at least I'm assuming, well-known approach to calculate the number pi in the first place, which I expected it to use math.py or some other equivalent constant to finish its task, but no, it came up with code to straight up calculate the number from scratch. Anyways, I wanted to test ChatGPT's limits, and I did indeed find them later on, so I asked it to port this code to an esolang. It wasn't quite happy with my choice of esolang at first, but did indeed translate it to the meme language Arnold C later on, and also to other languages. It also claimed the code can't be fully ported due to language restraints, which in my opinion shows some of weaknesses of ChatGPT. A human would have just redesigned the solution. ChatGPT claims the solution is straight up impossible without pointing it to certain helper functions. I finally finished my porting request by asking it to port this code to Assembler, which it actually did. That absolutely blew my mind. The code looks semi-valid. It really tried its best. It already wasn't quite happy with me requesting to port it to Esolangs, I suppose. Though considering Assembler needs to be, well, assembled, it might also be complete gibberish. Oh yeah, and in case you're curious how I actually managed to break ChatGPT, I simply requested it to translate various song lyrics to German, which is my mother tongue. However, I wanted it to write them the way they would be pronounced in an Austrian accent. And it really, really didn't want to do this and claimed it's impossible many times for various lame excuses. It also hallucinated fake lyrics multiple times, but I finally got it to work by giving it the next best popular song that came to my mind, which was Last Christmas Ever Time, and asking it very nicely to translate it for me. This might actually sound stupid, but it turns out if you are actually nice to the AI, it actually tends to give better responses and sometimes does things it otherwise wouldn't, at least in my experience. It tried its best, but at some point it just gave up trying to translate the lyrics and just fully defaulted back to English, even though it was talking to me in German before. In other words, it gave up or, well, I broke it. Alright, so after this not so short excursion, what are the first steps when trying to get ChatGPT to help you develop a mod for a game you have never modded before? Well, quite simple really, the first step is quite obvious if you think about it. We start off by asking it whether it knows how to mod the game and how to do so. The first response I got told me to, if I'm familiar with programming, use the game's modding tools to create my mod. This is a rather shallow response, but it certainly isn't wrong. 
I also got warned that modding might have legal implications, which, fair enough, for some developers this can certainly be true, but the Slave of Spy devs are rather accepting of modded content, thankfully. I felt like ChatGPT probably needs more information on what I actually want to achieve, as my initial question was rather vague, which was reflected in its answer, instead of asking about general modding, I decided to just jump into the meat and potatoes, so to speak, and ask it how I could add a specific card. I came up with a very creative card name for this card, that name being Defensive Bonk Poison, and I gave it some characteristics I want the card to have, namely being to add some damage, give the player some defense, and add a small amount of poison to the targeted enemy. This is a nice mix of a few of the game's main card mechanics and a nice way of testing how good ChatGPT actually is at understanding and modding this game. I also want to point out that I intended for this card to cost zero energy and, well, it indeed sort of does everything and it is my first foray into modding this game. Yeah, let's just say the card is kind of busted and completely OP in the right deck, I'll show you later. I guess I should have left the cost at one instead, but oh well. And the response I got to this first actual real request of sorts was surprisingly competent. Well, that's what I figured anyways, keep in mind I have never modded the game before this or looked at its code at all. But I wasn't wrong, the instructions were pretty much spot on, well, almost. It told me to create a class that inherits from the base card class, which eh, is not entirely correct, but close enough. Next it told me to set the card's type to attack and to add block and poison as status effects, which that's pretty darn close to how it's actually done. Interestingly, according to ChatGPT, once a class is complete, it needs to get added to the game's code, which, you know, doesn't make too much sense since it kind of is already in there, but sure. I think it got a bit confused with words here. What it wanted to say is that I need to add it to the game's card pool, not the game's code, which it states in the next part of the sentence. Finally, once all is done, the mod needs to get built and tested. So far, so good. I'd say, generally speaking, this sounds pretty solid so far, but very clearly, no actual code is involved so far, so this makes it kind of not very impressive up to this point, I'd say. And as you know, I had absolutely no idea how modding this game actually works prior to this, which at this point indeed was still the case. And I feel like I need to give the AI a little push in the right direction here, so to speak. So essentially, I just googled some, you know, essentials on modding Slave Aspire. By this, I don't mean I googled for a tutorial, I simply tried to figure out what the basic steps are, as in, you know, typical dependencies, something like a mod manager, etc. By googling and also checking dependencies of mods I had already installed, I figured out that most mods seem to be made using base mod, stslib, and mod Vespire. My understanding of Slave Vespire modding, in fact, is still limited, but this is essentially what these are. Mod Vespire is arguably the most important of the three, as it's the game's mod loader, comparable in part at least to something like Minecraft Forge, I'd say. Note how I said in part, that's because of base mod. Base mod is in essence the other part of something like Microforge, as mod Vespire puts the loader in mod loader and base mod puts the mod in mod loader, adding all the necessary hooks and classes to the game to actually add new stuff to the game in ways that don't lead to mod conflicts. And finally there is STSLib, which is an extension to base mod that adds even more hooks and other useful stuff to the game. At least, you know, that's how I understand it. No guarantees that this is 100% correct, of course. Oh, and by the way, all of this is, as far as I know, open source and maintained by the same person. Anyways, so what is ChatGPT's response to all of this? Well, we still don't really get any real code for now, but that sort of makes sense. Obviously, we still have to set up our workspace. Now, the instructions I got on how to actually do that are rather, let's just say, bare bones, but they are pretty much correct. I did look up how to set up a modding environment in the official documentation of the aforementioned mods. As I want GPT to help me create the code for the mod, not help me set up a modding environment, I feel like this is something that's best done the way that it was intended by mod loaders developers, just to prevent any weird bugs or other funny business from happening. Did I say still no code? Because that's actually not entirely true. We do get our first instructions here, which is very exciting. Let's see. So it wants us to create a new class for the card, named accordingly, so far so good. And it wants us to have the class extend the abstract card class, which is a slight improvement, but that is still uh, both correct and incorrect at the same time, but we'll get to that in a bit. Now we get some rather abstract instructions as to what we should set in the constructor and the type we should set the card to, etc. This is good, but mm, it doesn't give us any further information, for example, what the actual variables we need to, uh, to set are called and what they do, for example. We also are informed about the use method of the card, apparently something has to be done here as well. And finally, we are told to properly register our card using the function receive added cards provided by base mod. This is indeed the correct method for this, which is kind of impressive and also at the same time very funny as GPT seems to forget about this function itself later on. It also wants us to add this to the game's card pool using a function of stslib, but for my intended purposes, there is a much easier way to achieve this, let's just say. Now, I didn't start this conversation to get vague hints and directions by ChatGPT on what to vaguely do, theoretically speaking, so let's instead ask for some actual code this time, shall we? And success! 
As requested, we now finally get some code provided to us by ChatGPT. However, the AI seems to be a bit, uh, let's say, picky as to what we get from it. We do get the code for the class of a card, which is on screen right now. And don't worry, we'll look at that more closely in a second. We also again get told which function to use to register the card, but the main mod file, which is where registering usually is done, is uh, nowhere to be found. GPT only gave me some more imports and then just stopped generating. But let's cross that bridge once we get there. Let's just start by looking at the code we got for now. Looks good, I guess? I can already reveal to you right now that this code does not work as intended at all. However, it is very close to the actual final working solution. If you don't know what exactly you're looking at, it looks like perfectly valid and correct code for a mod. It is, however, slightly flawed in some places. Let's start with the extension of abstract card, shall we? Hindsight is 2020, as they say, and if you don't know this, which I didn't at the time, you'll be very confused as to why your mod isn't working properly. It is very important to, in fact, not extend the class abstract card, but instead the class custom card. Remember that I pointed out extending abstract card is neither right nor wrong? Well, the vanilla base game cards indeed extend this class, so I guess bonus points to ChatGPT for being a precise Peter of sorts. However, and this is a very big however, if you mod in a card, you want to extend a different class. The reason for this is simple, the base game's vanilla class can't be injected, well, not easily anyways, into the game. This basically means the game will create a card for you just fine, without errors, but you won't actually get it to show up in the game, so to speak. It's there, it even gets created, but it just doesn't get actually loaded and recognized by the game itself as a card. The custom card class, however, is built on top of the abstract card class, adding quality of life modding features and is easily injectable by the registration functions of base mod. Most of the process of creating this mod was somewhat straightforward, however this probably lost me a solid half an hour to maybe even one or two hours, as I just couldn't quite figure out the difference between a card extending the abstract or custom card classes. The documentation I found on this was a bit wishy-washy to me and the code looked very similar. I figured there is no difference, but yes, there indeed is a very big difference. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's look at some other mistakes made by GPT. For this I'll show you the final code, so to speak, and compare it to the code provided by ChatGPT. I'll also explain to you how I fixed it, which might be valuable information to some of you, I suppose. In case you're wondering, I basically fixed it the same way one would approach trying to learn how to mod a game or how to do certain things, and that is by simply figuring out how a vanilla base game does those things. So let's see what's still wrong here, shall we? Let's actually start with something rather unexpected, and that's the imports. Why? Well, they're easily fixed automatically by almost any modern IDE, but there are some interesting little errors in here. First of all, there is no gain block action import, but that is essentially a mistake inherited by yet another mistake we'll get to later. The rest of the imports look pretty good, however there is one very curious import here. Why are we importing vulnerable power? If you remember, I asked GPT to generate code for a card that deals damage, adds block and adds poison onto an enemy, so why would I need vulnerable power, which unsurprisingly is exactly as advertised on the tin, an import needed for adding a vulnerable stack onto an enemy. A very curious and strange, very much non-human mistake. Let's continue. As I explained earlier, ChatGPT extends the wrong class, and this simply doesn't work, well, at least not as intended. Stuff like the ID and card name stay largely the same and unchanged. I believe I tweaked the card description a little bit, as the AI's original description reads a bit like one of those early Yu-Gi-Oh card effects, you know, the ones where they hadn't quite figured out how the game is even supposed to be played yet, you know. No matter the situation, no player can tribute summon monsters, stuff like that. The only other thing I changed is the card's cost. I'm not even sure I told ChatGPT how much energy I want the card to cost, but I intended to have it cost zero energy, so I put it at zero. So I changed that, but the cost of one that ChatGPT set there initially might be a bit more balanced, actually. I accidentally kind of created an everything card, a little block, a little damage, and a little bit of poison on top of everything, let's just say... So yeah, let's just say we look at a little bit of gameplay, and I figured I'm gonna show you the true potential of this card. This is an infinite deck, which is where the card is right at home, basically, and yeah, the artwork is just a placeholder for now and just grabbed off of Google. My play isn't perfect, by the way, it's a bit sloppy, and this deck, in theory, is a little bit too big, and this particular deck, as you probably were able to tell already, would also work without, uh, without this card and just with the grand finale, or without the grand finale and just with this custom card instead. It heavily empowers the card finisher, which you're gonna see in, like, a second. And, yeah, as evident, this deck is a little bit too big and was not as brain-dead to play as it could be. In theory, this could one-turn kill pretty much any enemy, but, um, yeah, I'm not playing this quite correctly, which is why I'm gonna have to go into a second turn here in a second. I messed this part up right here. And, yeah, this can one-turn kill pretty much anything, except for Time Lord or Time Eater or whatever his name is, because that boss is pretty much designed to counter infinite one-turn decks like the one I'm playing right now. But yeah, as you can see, this deck is super OP and super busted. 
And yeah, this boss has like a second phase, that's like his whole entire thing, his gimmick or whatever. He revives again with like full health and gets stronger and more menacing or whatever, but it really doesn't matter for us since we just one turn kill him anyways. I guess I'm just gonna speed through this part. Since it really doesn't matter, it's just more of the same, so we can get uh, right back on track. And by the way, this is the deck that I used in this clip. Yeah, as you might be able to tell, this card pretty easily enables a truly crazy infinite combo and is just a little bit busted when played correctly. Anyways, let's continue with the code. It looks like ChatGPT also forgot to actually properly assign the card's damage value in the constructor and I genuinely forgot it didn't do this. I realized this again just now while writing the script for this video. I'd say that's a minor mistake, easily fixed obviously, as I don't even remember having to fix this. Now, let's talk about the biggest elephant, well, two elephants in the room. There's a very important function that is fully missing from ChatGPT's implementation. As a matter of fact, my implementation is incorrect as well, but on purpose. I wanted to test what happens if I just don't properly implement it. The other elephant in the room is the use function. GPT really seems to not quite understand that one, and admittedly, it's probably the most complicated function in this entire class. Right, I'd say let's start with the missing function, the upgrade function. Surprisingly, ChatGPT correctly implemented the make copy function, necessary to be able to duplicate the card by events that, uh, well, duplicate the card. It is very similar to the upgrade function, I feel like, but less important. Nonetheless, it fully missed this function. In fact, without this function, my IDE actually throws me an error. This function is essential and vital, the class literally won't work without overriding it. As you can see, I left it blank, as I said. I wanted to test what happens if you do so, if the game freaks out, and I guess it kinda does. Upgraded cards in Slave Spire have a green instead of white text font and usually improved stats, and when you upgrade this card, it just stays white and unupgraded and it simply doesn't improve. But to my surprise, you can indeed try to upgrade it, as just described, it will let you upgrade it, uh, upgrade it as well. It just won't do anything. Very curious. All right, let's tackle the big one next, shall we? So, what does this function do, and what went wrong here? The use function is essentially where the magic happens, so to speak. It reminds me a bit of the AI goals of Minecraft mobs for the simple reason that, similar to AI behavior in Minecraft, in this game, using so-called actions, you can make the game do pretty much almost anything, very similar and reminiscent of AI goals in Minecraft, as I just said, where you can let a mob behave in almost any way you want, provided you set it up with a correct AI behavior. At least it feels very similar to me, but yeah, maybe that's just me. Anyways, the use function defines what the card does when it's used, essentially, so unsurprisingly, this indeed is the anything goes function in Slave Aspire, where mods can do some truly crazy and bizarre stuff. And as you can see, according to ChatGPT, we want to apply two apply power actions and also one damage action. And I'd say the damage action part is quite self-explanatory. And in fact, this line is entirely correct, which uh, yay, too bad, I guess. The other two lines, however, are not so simple. Let's start with a simple of the two lines, the second line. Apply power action, to my understanding at least, mind you I know all I know about modding this game from this little mini mod and chat GPT, is a somewhat generic action that can be used to trigger all kinds of stuff, like poison for example. I'd assume if one were to add a custom status effect this would be the action used to apply that effect. In this case however we want to apply a base game effect, that one being to poison the enemy. The effect for this is indeed called poison power, a correct observation by chat GPT, however its usage is... Well, maybe this is how it was used in the past? I kinda doubt it though. I'm guessing since GPT didn't quite know what to put here, it just hallucinated something that looks right, but is plain wrong. Poison Power needs two abstract features in its constructor, one owner and one target. I'm not sure if I did this right myself, I'm guessing the first maybe should be the player itself. After all, the player used the card and as such is the, uh, is the effect owner? However, setting our enemy as both target and owner worked just fine, so I just went with that. The rest of his code, funnily enough, is correct. Whether this is a coincidentally correct hallucination by ChatGPT or not, we may never know, I suppose. Alright, so what about that final line then? Well, that one, I'm afraid, is just plain wrong. At least to my understanding. As you can see from my code, a block is gained entirely differently, and for this one needs to use the gain block action class. Now, how did I figure this out? As I mentioned way earlier, if you want to mod a game, usually you wouldn't learn to do so from an AI. <laughs> and in my opinion, neither can you learn this knowledge from modding tutorials in lots of cases. Also, I want to use this moment to point out the official documentation for most of the Slave Aspire modding tools is, well, it's very over-engineered, I'd say, but just not very good. However, this seems to be the case for lots of modding communities, as is something else I'll come back to in a second. If you know what you need, you'll find it in the documentation, but if you already know what you need, you probably won't need the documentation in the first place, so uh, yeah. It also plugs this tutorial mod named The Default, that is just overwhelmingly stuffed with essentially all custom content you could possibly ever want to add, which is super confusing as this just bloats the project in all kinds of ways and makes it unnecessarily hard to understand. And it also kind of treats you like a baby, it makes you re read through huge walls of text, 
and also commits the, in my opinion, cardinal sin of all tutorials. It is provided to you intentionally broken because clearly if that wouldn't be the case, you wouldn't learn anything from it or something. I hate when people do that. It's one of my personal biggest pet peeves. I want to learn how to mod the game, not, you know, fix some arbitrary intentional bug that isn't even really a bug. Stuff like that in my book is a great way to gatekeep people out of learning to mod a game or program in general. Lots of people get started by modding games and this is indeed not the first time I've noticed this weird, I guess I'd call it elitism in modding communities of various games. Please just stop doing this, nobody gains anything from this. By the way, no offense to any of the developers of the modding tools for Slave Aspire or any other game for that matter, but you know, that stuff just really isn't cool and you should just, you know, really try to help people understand stuff, not like treat them like babies. I'm sure you know what I mean. All right, so how do you learn how to do those things then? Well, it's simple really, you just learn straight from the source. The game on its own obviously already has a bunch of cards for that block. All you have to do is navigate through the classes provided by the game itself. How do we do that? Well, we do in fact have access to those files, and where are those files located? In my IDE, which is Eclipse by the way, those can be found under Maven Dependencies and the file desktop.jar is the one we want to take a look at. Since this card is a card for the Silent, let's take a look at cards for this character, but we could also look at cards for any other character. The Silent cards are the green cards, unsurprisingly their classes can be located in the package com.megacrit.cardcrawl.cards.green. Megacrit being the developer and Cardcrawl being the initial in development project name of a game, I'm guessing. Let's look at a card then, preferably one that adds block since that's what we want to figure out. How about the backflip class? That card draws two cards and adds some block. We don't have a proper decompilation for this file, which makes it a bit more cryptic to read than, say, the files of a game like Minecraft, but don't let this scare you off. See? There's the use function, it's wedged in between a whole lot of other mumbo jumbo, and what's that? Now would you look at that, there it is. The game block action. We have enough information about how to apply this ourselves, the name should be sufficient to figure the rest out on our own. Alternatively, we could also keep digging here for more information on how to use this class well. And if we can't find what we need in this class, we can always look into a different class that does the same thing, provided of course multiple things in the base game utilize the mechanic you want to utilize in your mod. If we keep looking, we can even learn about another mechanic. See? If I would like to create a card that draws me more cards when it is used, this can most likely be achieved using a draw card action. I believe that's all for this class then. There is however one more class we still need to create and that is the main mod class. Similarly to a Minecraft mod, Slave Aspire mods consist of a whole bunch of classes that make up the mod itself and usually one main utility class of sorts that handles registration of the mod and of stuff in the mod, you know, essentially this class talks to and negotiates with a mod loader. Once again, just like the Forge mod loader for Minecraft, when creating Slave Aspire mods a multitude of various hooks are used to register a mod and its elements. This is kind of comparable to a newspaper subscription service. If you want to receive newspapers, you need to get a newspaper uh, subscription. After that, you will regularly get one in the mail. To register a mod, we do something similar to this. Instead of a newspaper, we do in fact also subscribe. However, we subscribe to the event hooks provided by base mod. To be precise, we only want to add cards, no other fancy shenanigans. So we only subscribe to the events of the edit card subscriber variety. This way, whenever the game is started, we simply tell BaseMod to subscribe us to this event hook and when the time has come to register cards, we will be notified by BaseMod that it is now our turn to register our cards or, well, our one card, I guess. So, did ChatGPT figure all of this out correctly as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, sort of. ChatGPT at least correctly identified some of the things that I need to get done to get this mod to work. Using the add spy initializer annotation for example to initialize the mod and the code to re register the card is in fact also correct. We are missing a line of code that actually adds the card to some card pool, but we'll get back to that in a bit I think. Unfortunately ChatGPT tries to add the card to the game on mod initialization. Would this work? I'm not entirely sure. If I tried it when I was cobbling this mod together as of writing the script, that has actually been quite a while ago, believe it or not, but if I did, it did not work for one reason or another. I do believe it would most likely not work anyways, as I know from my Minecraft modding experience that mod loaders tend to be very specific about how registration of things is handled. In other words, if you would try registering something in Minecraft, while it's not time to specifically get that thing registered, at that point the game would either crash or just launch without your mod, it would either way in 99% of cases not work as intended. I am pretty dang sure the same is true for Slave Spy mods. In fact, while I mentioned earlier that the card class provided by the mod extends abstract card, which leads to lots of issues, I think all of those issues were essentially the card not showing up in the game. The very next question I asked ChatGPT was why I am getting an exception in initializer error though, so yeah, it looks like I'm correct, registering in this way simply doesn't work. 
It's really not helping either that ChatGPT claims that the error very clearly occurs due to me trying to use add card and not the method add custom card, which I'm not entirely sure even is a real method and I have just checked it in fact does not exist and is a hallucination, which is a typical pattern of ChatGPT. If it doesn't know how something works, it simply hallucinates a convenient solution to the problem presented to it. Since this code is still in the init method though, this would still not work anyways, regardless if this function exists or not, as this is simply not how registering a card works. And as you can see, I didn't inquire GPT further about this and just fixed it myself, as clearly this was not a topic GPT was knowledgeable on. Next I inquired on an in uh, initialization error of my card class. I'm guessing this had to do with the wrong class being extended, but I'm not quite sure. I got some generic re recommendations which didn't help at all, no surprise there, and managed to work this out myself as well. Well, not quite, as my next request was to make the card colorless, which was an attempt to get the card to be put into the colorless card pool of a game, you know, so it actually finally shows up in the game, and the response to this once again is absolutely hilarious, telling me to simply add it to the colorless card pool using the basemod.addCard to colorless pool method. Man, such a convenient method, it's almost like it was made exactly to do what I requested. Surely this method exists and wasn't hallucinated by ChatGPT. I mean, yeah, obviously this is not a real method, I don't think I'll have to tell you that, right? <laughs> But yeah, anyways, in the end I registered the card as a green card, as initially intended anyways, using the call you can see on screen right now, basemod.getgreencards to add, dot add card, which works like a charm. Uh, editing me here, I realized I kind of forgot to go over the rest of the final code in this class, so let's uh, do that real quick. As mentioned earlier, using the addspire initializer tag was a correct observation by ChatGPT, however it actually doesn't do anything with that. As you can see in my initialization method, instead of blindly adding cards whenever, like some lunatic, I instead create an instance of my main mod, mod class. This instance in turn then calls the subscribe method of base mod, handing in itself as an argument, or rather its spy initializer instance. The receive added cards method is tagged as add override, or in other words, it implements the added cards functionality. By implementing this and subscribing to base mod with a class it is implemented in, which is the mod class itself, we tell base mod that we want to subscribe to that specific event hook. In that method we then add our card and also add it to the appropriate card pool and mark it as seen. If we don't mark it as seen, the card is in the game, but not unlocked, I believe. And that's all for the code of this class. The code to register the card itself is largely the same to what ChatGPT told me to do. However, actually hooking it all up to the mod loader itself seems to be something ChatGPT does not really understand. In fact, that is not just all for the code of this class, but instead that is all in general. You might not believe it, but this entire mod pretty much just consists of only these two classes, the main mod class and the card class. Then again the mod only adds one singular card, so I suppose this fact is not that surprising after all. So what are my conclusions here? Would I recommend using ChatGPT to learn modding? Would I do this again? Should you do this, or rather should anyone do something like this, or is it just a waste of time? And another obviously important question, does the resulting mod even work? I'm assuming you're seeing the modern action in the background as we speak, so that should probably answer that question. But what about the learning to mod games part? Or to program in general? Well, let me put it this way. I think using AI tools like ChatGPT is a great way of quickly gaining lots of knowledge on topic, but there's a huge caveat to this. As you might have noticed, I'm already knowledgeable on modding games in general, and obviously I'm also quite experienced when it comes to programming. Using ChatGPT to get a jump start of sorts into a topic is a good idea, at least judging by my past experiments with it. You won't always get 100% correct information out of it, but it tends to be quite good at getting the general idea of a topic across, so to speak. For example, it pretty much immediately pointed me to some useful resources to learn modding Slave Aspire. But beyond that? Well, I have to say it's quite difficult for me to recommend ChatGPT for anything beyond that, really, for multiple reasons. First of all, there's the concept of hallucinations. If GPT doesn't know the correct answer to your question, it will simply hallucinate a convincing sounding answer. That tends to be quite annoying, but it's usually spotted and fixed easily. Besides this, however, as you may have noticed, it provided me with code that simply does not work and is incorrect. I can't really fault it for that, it is just a language model and obviously doesn't have a perfect understanding of some, in the grand scheme of things, obscure modding project for a game. This is quite problematic, however, seeing how the code it generates tends to often work without producing errors, but not as intended. And the problem with that is, the code you're trying to fix was written by what essentially might as well be an alien being from another planet, that clearly doesn't quite know what it's doing. And thus it can't help you fix a problem. It will try, don't get me wrong, but it will just, you know, hallucinate random stuff. It's a bit comparable to when Kasparov lost against a chess computer Deep Blue in the 90s and reflexively asked the team behind it what his mistake was, but they weren't really able to explain. There was this sort of communication barrier between the chess player and the chess computer, and this feels rather similar to me. 
It is fixable, but to do so you have to pretty much already mostly know what you're doing in the first place, which I feel like kind of defeats the purpose, at least to some extent. And finally, and most importantly, there's a learning aspect. Did I actually learn something, and how well did I learn what I learned? Let me put it this way, the mod I made, it works. Not perfectly, but it definitely works. It's not super complex either, so you really can't expect to learn how to perform miracles just by creating this mod, so to speak. But to be quite honest with you, I really don't feel like I learned a whole lot about Slave Spy modding. Don't get me wrong, I get the bigger picture of it all, so to speak. But I still remember learning how Minecraft modding works, and I, more importantly, still remember how much I did in fact learn from creating a simple basic tutorial mod. I think the big difference is the way the knowledge is presented, to be honest. I don't like huge walls of text that ultimately are mostly substanceless, as mentioned earlier. But I don't like the GPT approach either. ChatGPT basically serves you a final solution on a platter, and sure, it might not be perfect and you might have to fix something to ma actually make it work, but it's basically the finished solution as you would need it, and that removes 99% of all thinking required to get there, so to speak. And that's not how learning is done, at least in my opinion. And that is exactly how I feel about Slave Spy modding. Learning sort of didn't take place. I don't feel like I could confidently say that I could now effortlessly produce a Slave Spy mod of my own, so to speak. Sure, I get all the ideas behind it, but when you read those basic modding tutorials, they always have you use your brain to some extent, so to speak. And I'm sure you get what I mean. You don't have that with this, and it really shows, at least for me. All of the function names, the important stuff to keep in mind when creating a card, you know all those good habits and typical pitfalls when modding something in, the stuff you either discover yourself on the way, or that gets explained outright in those tutorials, you just don't have that with this. It's just, this is the code, this might be how it works, vaguely, GPT doesn't really know what it's talking about after all, and there you go, that's that's it. It is sort of a very cold and computery approach to learning, so to speak, but I guess that's fitting, considering we are indeed talking about an artificial intelligence here. After all, an AI doesn't run to typical human programming pitfalls and mistakes, and an AI doesn't have or need good code habits. For an AI, code is just code, it just works, and that's about it. At least for now, I don't think we can expect to get tips in that direction, and I don't really think AI is quite at the level to provide us with those street smarts like that. Now I'm sure there are some of you that still have questions about a thing or two, and obviously I can't predict all of those, so should I not answer them in the video now, feel free to pop those questions or suggestions into the comments and I'll try to answer them there. And while you're already at it, feel free to also support me by liking this video or subscribing to my channel, that would help out a lot as this channel is still rather small at this point. But to answer a question that I am sure some of you have, did I publish this mod onto the Steam Workshop, or do I have plans to do that? I haven't published it yet, and I didn't really intend to do so, but seeing how I've now created this video, I probably am gonna polish the mod a little bit, remove the card artwork I just grabbed off of Google Images, and replace it with something I'm actually allowed to use and actually publish it. If I actually go ahead and publish the mod, you will be able to find a link to it in the description and maybe also the comments or something. Will I create more Slave Spy mods? Most likely not, at least not for now, as I'm currently working on a game project of my own and I'd rather use my time to work on that, at least for the moment. Speaking of a game project I'm currently working on though, I'll probably start creating devlogs on that soon and I'll try to make those instructional, I hope that way you can get more out of those. And I'll also try to upload those weekly, probably, but so far my uploads on this channel have been rather spotty at best, so we will see how well that will work out, I suppose. So yeah, that's it for this video, at least I think so. I hope I managed to entertain you with this video, or even better, maybe you learned a thing or two from this video. I'm always very happy to hear that I help people pick up a thing or two with my content. And I hope to see you in my next video, don't forget to leave a sub if you haven't already, as I can't quite yet tell you when I'll upload that, I guess. Until then, bye and see ya, hopefully soon.